อันนี้ของฮาเซลแกน Our morning today started off at Paris Baguette, a store that's very common in Seoul. So while I sampled their bread like bagels and we had our not so great cappuccino, we also people watched. So all like patches for acne and pimples. The previous day, we noticed this road with trees on either side. I knew for sure that it connects to the d o k s u g o n g stone wall, so we decided to see what this road was about. As the office of Singer Corporation, formerly maybe I think. This was a very pretty area, and apparently more romantic at night when the lights by the wall comes on. There are a number of K dramas that have been filmed at this location itself. Remember that show Run On? Uh, and then that guy was a runner, and she was a translator. The road by the wall itself emerged out into the city plaza, and there appeared to be some kind of event going on. We didn't understand Korean, but judging from the music that was blaring across the speakers, it appeared to be something political. Nearby was also a memorial for the victims of the 29th October Itaewon disaster. Eventually, we made our way to c h o n g g y e c h o n Which was a restored stream that almost ran dry during Seoul's post-war economic development. Believe it or not, this area used to have a huge expressway running over and along the stream between the buildings on both sides that you see here. That is so nice and so square and so symmetrical. I like it very much. As you can imagine, the restoration process, which involved demolishing the expressway itself and pumping water into the original stream, was no small feat. Not to mention the amount of controversy it attracted due to it being costly financially, but also socially. Well, we're here today. Might as well enjoy it.
all demons are water lilies. Eventually, we made our way towards a restaurant selling chokbal, a Korean version of pork trotters. Surprisingly, this location was suggested by Chip himself. Though from my research, I had already known that this restaurant was featured on the Michelin Guide and therefore was already on my list of hopefuls. As you can see, this was also on everyone else's to eat list. Little dumplings with rice cakes in it, side dishes, a little bit of salad there. We thought the chok bao was tasty, but it wasn't like a wow moment for both of us. The skin was gelatinous and had a slightly sweet taste to it. The flesh inside could use a hint of soy sauce, but it does make for good beer food. The boy pork, however, was really good, savory and tender, meant to be eaten with napa cabbage leaves and kimchi. We both really liked their dumplings, which had a good amount of the pig's best friend, chives. Their banchan was interesting, for example, I didn't know what this was, I didn't know what this was, and I wasn't sure what to do with this. One thing's for sure, we were becoming experts at ordering cast beer in Korean. Later that day, I tried convincing Oppa to take a public bus for the first time in his life. Well, it turned out to be a little bit of a traumatic experience. The very first bus we opted to ride was to Namde Moon Market from the Sode Moon Station. The first question the bus driver asked us in English was, where are you going? And after he found out we were headed to Namde Moon, he started talking in a very animated way to us in Korean, thinking that I was Korean. Finding out that I wasn't Korean still didn't make it any easier. He motioned for both of us to get in the bus, since he had to get the bus moving anyway. He obviously was still trying to tell us something. I managed to get my Papago app going against the flurry of Korean words, which resulted in this. Along with his enthusiastic body language, it was obvious that there was something going on in the city that was affecting his bus route. A kind Samaritan in the bus from New Zealand, who could understand Korean, went up to the bus driver to get clarity. And he explained to us that the normal bus route will not go through Namde Moon since there is a demonstration going on with the Labour Party. Remember those park police buses? Remember the enthusiastic patriotic singing near Chong Gyecheon? Yeah, we forgot. In hindsight, it was actually quite funny to recall how this happened. Throughout the ride, the bus driver continued talking animatedly in Korean, mainly in monologue to himself. And one Korean ajuma in the bus eventually said, Perhaps to indicate on behalf of the whole busload of passengers that everybody understood. Anyway, the bus driver eventually dropped all of us off right in front of Seoul Square. And this was the lively scene from here on. That must be what's happening this morning as well. Judging from the number of Koreans stuck out in the middle of the road with us, we didn't feel so bad now that we didn't know about it. Actually, we were pretty impressed with how everything was managed. It seemed orderly and the police were doing their best to move people along amidst groups of demonstrators. 
Seoul's oldest market, Namdaemun Sijang, turned out to be a pretty busy location in the late afternoon. We didn't hang around too long, but I did manage to queue for a honey-filled Korean pancake and a slightly greasy but savory mung bean pancake. And this they gave us two, right? Next stop is Namdaemun Tower, also known as Enso Tower. Now this is where sometimes if you're using a mapping app to get somewhere, you really don't know what it's going to be like until you get there. For example, Naval Maps told us to walk here for the Namsan Cable Car Station. Well, apparently there are several stages to get to Namsan Tower. And here's all the things to do wrong if you're going. Number one, absolutely attempt to go on a day that's a weekend or a public holiday. Check. Number two, attempt to walk up the steep road to the Omri lift. Check. Number three, attempt to queue 20 minutes like every other person for the Omri lift. Check. Unless you want to climb these lovely stairs up to the station. And believe it or not, this is not the only queue. On this public holiday, there's another longer one for the cable car tickets, another one for the cable car, and another one to go up Namsan Tower to the observatory. That's four queues in total. Anyway, just so you can feel how frustrating that was just with the first queue alone, here's the footage. When we got to the top, this top, we decided to reschedule Namsan Tower for another day and ended up at a nearby restaurant with an open terrace. You know, cause Koreans don't run their air conditioning during this cool month. Here we are at a nearby restaurant because that line was just too freaking long. And I know this will probably sound sacrilegious, but our first Seolong Tang at a place not known to sell Seolong Tang actually turned out to be the best Seolong Tang we've tasted in our week here in Seoul. Looks like Opa is enjoying his uh, Seolong Tang. Mm -hmm. It's comfort food, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's going to give me diabetes. But... <laughs> it's not like you're eating this every day of your life. We ordered a second bowl to share because it was just so good. Well, well, well. Fish. Get that hot pork jerky. That one as well. A dry octopus. Yeah. Okay, no, this is cuttlefish. I think it's cuttlefish. Maybe what they mean to say is prawn, not spawn. 